Hello everyone, welcome to Maritime Software Hub, the People Podcast. Um, today I'm really excited to be joined by Joanna Balcuni and we're going to talk about digitizing crew training. Um, this is our first ever in-person podcast, so uh, bear with us, but hopefully it will be smooth. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you so much, Joanna, for coming in. Really thank appreciate it. Thank you for it. the invitation, Calum. My pleasure. So why don't you give us a quick introduction and overview of, of who you are and, and, and what you do? Great, great. Thank you for the invitation once again. Uh, I'm the guinea pig yeah. <laughs> for this <laughs> live recording, but, you know, we'll make it right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm John, as you know. Uh, I work for Mesh Training uh, right now. I have been with Mesh Training uh, for the past two months, but I have an extensive experience in the shipping industry. Uh, my role with uh, Mars Training, um, I'm leading the learning and development initiatives for the maritime sector in the simulation division. So basically, we do a lot of simulation in Mars Training. Mars Training was set up after uh, an incident on one of our own uh, rigs. So okay. we are very much based uh, on safety and improving efficiency on board uh, vessels and offshore. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've been with the shipping industry for the past, uh, decades or more. I don't know. I have lost count. Uh, and, uh, I'm also an active academic. Uh, yeah. I teach for the University of Essex in collaboration with, uh, Aegean College here in Greece, uh, and for Lloyd's Maritime Academy. Wow. So, you know, I, I bring a bit of, you know, industry knowledge and also academia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, very, very busy lady by the sound of it. <laughs> and how did you first get into shipping? Uh, that was like a neon ago, I think. You know, uh, I studied my master's degree is in human resources management. Okay. So this is how I got into shipping. Uh, you can teach us something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, it's funny because um, my first ever position was in recruitment. Okay. I was a recruiting consultant for yeah. Manpower. Like, uh, you I know, in a neat that, yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's funny. Uh, but yeah, my first position was uh, in the HR department of Ocean Rig. Uh, the company uh, had uh, drill ships and uh, two oil rigs, um, but it was bought off by Transocean. Okay. So um, while I was there, uh, I joined uh, as an HR assistant, but then I had a collaboration with uh, our quality department. Um, we liked each other, so they offered me a position in the quality department. I kind of fell in love with maritime, yeah. so then I jumped off uh, in an operations role in one of the major ship owners here in Greece. So this is how it kicked off for me in, uh, in the shipping industry. But I think it was very important, the fact that you know I was also in operations, because I could um, realize what's going on in Sips. And this is very important also in HR because, you know, having worked also in managerial roles, in training and HR, yeah. it's important, you know, to be acquainted. I mean, it's another thing, you know, to, uh, to know in theory what training is about and another thing to you know what's going on on a vessel when, you know, they are discharging, when they are mooring. So this is important. Yeah, and no, I, I really agree. And um, no, it's really interesting you had that you... you, you had that experience of recruitment, you know yeah. what the uh, the role is like, and and uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the sort of like the highs and lows, and um, yes, yeah, so it's a great way, yeah, to, to, to get into any sort of role like in terms of sales and and connecting people. So you must have learned or met a lot of people from across the industry. That's true, and I think I still have the virus of recruitment in in me. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to connect people with various jobs i mean it's not my role anymore and i don't do it for a living but you know i still try to do it i don't know why i think it's kind of like a virus yeah, no, that's good that's good <laughs> recruitment is like a virus yeah <laughs> okay cool um all right so so talk us about your your day-to-day -day role now at Maersk. Mm, yeah so you know Maersk training is part of uh, the big Maersk family yeah, of course. But, you know, what people don't know is that we are divided into many other companies. So, of course, we have like Mesh Broker, Mesh Client, and of course, here we are, Mesh Training. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not only serve our own uh, vessels, but we serve uh, a, a vast array of principles. Our work is mainly in the offshore industry. We're like, you know, training 70% of our work is in the offshore industry. So we are more focused there, but we also are focused in uh, maritime and renewables, wind. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, you know, our line of work. 
Um, we have uh, a lot of programs, like including simulation, as I told you about, but also people in performance, uh, safety and survival, and AIDS, uh, AIDS2S uh, yeah. services. Um, and, you know, my daily role, I, I kind of... Um, how can I say that? I, I bring together commercial and operations. So, you know, we have like, we need to translate the commercial appetite into something that is deliverable as a product. Uh, so this is where I come into play. Okay. So whenever we are developing a new course, uh, I bring this experience of uh, putting... Oh, that's, that's the... Uh, <laughs> I did um, warn you about the lights. Yeah, they come back on, which is good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, whenever we are delivering a new product, um, I'm I'm there to guide the process and manage uh, our development resources. Yeah. Uh, in that sense, uh, so you know that the product uh, fits all the instructional design criteria and other learning theories, and also it fits uh, the industry standards. So it might be an STCW course. It might be in a SICTO standard, for example, or any other standard I mean, in the industry. So this is about it. And of course, there are a lot of interesting projects that I manage on a daily basis. So there's a lot of project management there. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you just generally, how do you go about delivering that training? I'm sure there's lots of different methods. Ugh. But what are the main kind of uh, channels that you use? Of course, you know, we do have the classroom courses. Yeah. And uh, in the sipping industry, there's a lot of appetite still for classroom courses. And honestly, I don't know if this will go away. But after COVID-19, of course, we saw a huge surge for e-learning, virtual learnings, and increasing accessibility to training. Um, and this appetite, it kind of like uh, peaked at some point. I don't know if it will continue to grow, honestly, because, you know, I'm an academic. I also teach in a classroom. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of more familiar with that. But yeah, uh, we do have a suite uh, of uh, classroom courses, virtual uh, instructor-led courses, and then our e-learnings. Um, I think the, the difficulty when we are discussing about digitalizing crew training is the fact that it is so fragmented. So you have so many different solutions. I think that the, the change in the industry will come when somebody will be able to bring everything together. Yes. From classroom to e-learning. Because, you know, most people do not understand that it comes down to competencies to building abilities and essentially learning is about changing behavior. So when we are doing a training, what we want? We want to change the safety behavior on board a vessel. So we don't want an accident to happen. Yeah. This is what we are trying to do. So um, yeah, I think the, the main catalyst in the industry will actually be, you know, bringing everything together. Okay. And how much of the training is kind of done, let's say, on shore, so in the classroom, in the simulators, as opposed to kind of on board the vessel, kind of while mm. they're sort of sailing, would you say? Well, I think that uh, it really depends on the principal. There, there will be some owners who have uh, this interest in, in learning yeah. and virtual-led solutions, and there will be also others who will be more invested in classroom courses. And of course, it really depends on, on, on where you're delivering the training, because as far as we know um, right now, uh, you don't get you know, Wi-Fi services wherever you are in the world. Yeah. I mean, it can be very fragmented. Apart from where I live in Kent <laughs> sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true, though. I mean, we, we need to consider also that some areas where our seafarers live, might not be so accessible to, you know, e-learning. And, yeah. you know, we need to be sensitive about it. So, yeah, uh, the majority of our trainings is classroom. But we do see that there is a gradual change uh, for e-learning, but especially virtual-led solutions. And I don't mean uh, self-paced e-learnings because, you know, there is still um, not a lot of trust on self-paced e-learnings okay yeah. you know you do you can understand that i mean yeah do, do you i mean unless you have tests i guess yeah yeah but you know there are main systems that you know they have like eye tracking when you're doing uh self-paced e-learning 
Oh, wow. Do yeah. you like special contact lenses or something? You put on? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, very cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, it, it makes sense. I mean, they can track your movement and everything. And also they can see if uh, the person who's trained, who's taking the assessment or the e-learning is actually the person who should be oh, right. taking okay, yeah, <laughs> the e-learning. Because there's a lot of cheating in there. Yeah, no, yeah. I guess... No, that's interesting. So, so do you think overall, though, technology is advancing the, the training for, for mariners and, and, and shore-based personnel? For sure, for sure. And, you know, um, another catalyst in the industry is, of course, AI. Yeah. And, I mean, it would be great if we had, like, an AI that could, you know, guide us through the competencies and see in, the, in which area we are lacking, like a seafarer where he's lacking, and, uh, you know, propose like a, a training or a micro learning solution because not all interventions have to be like a five uh, five day long course yeah. not, not everything comes down to this but it can be like a micro learning solution um, it can be a coaching session it can be anything so I mean imagine if you had this um, competency management system where yeah. it could also propose you yeah, so we've had, I mean, recently on the podcast, we've had two or three technology companies that focus on the crewing side. Mm -hmm. um, and we, ha we had Signal on, S-I-G-N-O-L, yeah. and, and they obviously do more behavioral, and you, yeah, you yeah, probably yeah, know yeah. them very well. Um, and they're really interesting. And I, I think if they've got, they can use those sort of um, individual traits and behaviors of individual seafarers, or maybe even just like ranks of seafarers yeah. in generalization of how they can deliver the training. It can be really interesting and helpful. So, yeah, I, I think it's fascinating, and especially if it then improves uh, the safety side. Yeah, of shipping. yeah, yeah. And especially in the safety side, I mean, for high risk operations like uh, CO2, extinguishing fires, there's a lot of VR into play. Yeah. And we can see, um, like, you know, in such scenarios that. Obviously, I mean, if you have a, you cannot, you know, put a fire on board and, you know, start playing with fires. No. <laughs> I mean, Do some drills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, VR and AR, there's something there that can help us with those scenarios uh, in a re realistic manner. Because, you know, the key to these areas is, is the immersion of the, of the trainee. They have to feel that they are actually inside the scenario. So VR can help us achieve that. But of course, it's a solution that, that, that it's very difficult to be implemented by everyone. You know, sometimes, you know, you know, you can send the VR goggles on board the vessel yeah. or you can use it in a classroom. Or in some cases, um, there are examples where you can take the VR test from the ease of your home or the okay. scenario. So you do have this possibility as well. So are you typically using internal kind of simulators and, and technology yeah. or, or do you also use external vendors as well to help? We do use external vendors like, um, you know, consultants and SMEs uh, for the development of the courses. But uh, in um, almost all of training locations, we have specific uh, simulations. Yeah. Um, we are partnering with uh, Kongsberg. Yeah. We, they are like leading uh, in simulation and also ARI. Uh, in some of our locations. So we are delivering like um, top-notch uh, simulation experience. We have like full mission bridge simulators, full engine simulators. I mean, if you go to our site in Svenburg, yeah. um, it's pretty amazing uh, what they're doing there. You know, I don't want to brag. You know, one of our uh, main qualities uh, are like we are humble in what we do. But honestly, the site that it's built there is like top notch. Yeah. Uh, we even have facilities for we have like um, this course called, called uh, Leading as One. Okay. So um, uh, this brings together the, the team members. And apart from the simulation, they're doing like this uh, camp experience in order for them to bond all together. So oh, they're wow. like bonfires and everything. And it's at the campus. So, you know, this is very cool, I think. Yeah, I think anything like that is really interesting. And um, it makes you think of a company called um, Shipping Systems. Mm. Like, uh, obviously, like uh, Osha Perry and the guys there. And they have their, um, I think, Captain Training Academy. Yeah. 
uh, which is a really fantastic initiative. So anything like that, I think, is really good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because, you know, it, it comes down to knowledge transfer. So, you know, when you're moving to uh, this pyramid of, of learning goals and objectives, of course, the base is, you know, understanding something. And the top is applying, applying something or creating something by yourself. So when you're, you're going up to the pyramid, you need to have like this immersion into training. You need to be doing it by yourself. And, you know, 70% of what is taught, you know, you, you forget it. But if you do it by yourself, most of it, most of it, you will just, you know, retain it over the time. Yeah. And what do you think is in generally the most effective method of training? I know it's a big question. That's a big question. It I depends. Mean... <laughs> I mean, if we, if we think about technology, so mm. do you think people generally... Um, the uptake is higher on, like, like you said, classroom-led or maybe video online at home or simulation. I guess it's completely different. Uh, it's completely different. And, uh, you know, at the same time, we need to take into consideration the specific of its person and the specific of its course. Because if you have, like, a theoretical course, like, uh, for example, a theory on uh, MLC, I mean, okay, you, you can do it as a self-paced e-learning. MLC? A maritime labor convention. Okay, Sorry. Right, okay, you right. know, sometimes I'm so, you yeah, know, inside. Yeah. In the, in I was just saying like machine learning, computer or something. Oh, uh, like, yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Maritime okay. labor convention. So, yeah, if you have like a course on uh, the basics of uh, the MLC yep. or any other convention, this can be like a self-paced uh, course. But if you're doing an exercise on ship handling, or mooring and mooring. Yeah, so different. It's so different. I mean, you, you can have some theory, like in um, core regs, for example, but the application will always be in a simulator. It, it can't be otherwise. And of course, the cost of not doing it in a simulator is quite higher. Yeah. I mean, there's like this, this cartoon. It's quite well known. So the CEO asks uh, the CFO, um, what if we train our employees and they leave? And then the other guy replies, okay, and what if we don't train them and they stay? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, <laughs> it's a high risk, especially yeah, in our industry. Yeah, 100%. Okay, um, so from your point of view then, you're obviously speaking to different crewing managers regularly, different companies um, or within Maersk. Do you have any advice or tips for them to try and help with their sort of training processes? I think they need to be proactive. And we see that, you know, the maritime industry is a bit, you know, a traditionalist. We take it, you know, step by step. And I, I totally understand it because when you see at uh, the OPEX of uh, either a bit dry bulkers, tankers, whatever name it, it doesn't matter, the highest OPEX item is always the crew expenses. And training comes down. And bunkers, into that. probably, as well, yeah. Uh, bunkers is another thing. But yeah, I mean, crew expenses is quite a lot of their OPEX. So I understand that, you know, when you have like a very high item in your OPEX list, sometimes, you know, the training budgets are constraint so you need to focus only on those areas that will be most impactful but at the same time if you're not proactive and if you're not seeing what's coming ahead like decarbonization for example mm -hmm. i mean we're talking so much about decarbonization but people need to be educated on what decarbonization means and not only uh, the crews that we send on board but even the people who are who are sore i mean what's methanol what's ammonia yeah. and what it's like working with those fuels. There's a lot of risk and there's a lot of cost of, of gains, but at the same time, we need to, to be openly addressing those matters as well, because there's a lot, and you know, have been in Posidonia in uh, some technical seminars about uh, decarbonization and new fuels. And I think we forget sometimes that those people who are working on the vessels and the sewer also need to be trained. Yeah. I mean, there's a, lot, a huge factor there. I mean, if they are not acquainted with all those new technologies. Yeah, I mean, my understand of, uh, understanding of ethanol and ammonia with different fuels is pretty limited. Um, <laughs> but I, have, I think, yeah, it'd be great to have um, yeah, the, the foundations of the safety aspects of each different type of fuels and 
I guess it has a big impact on where they can load and discharge all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I mean, bunkering operations, for example, mm -hmm. it's it's a crucial role there. If you're talking about uh, methanol or any other uh, new fuel, it's and of course the new engines that are coming into play, like um, dual fuel engines. There's a lot of work being done there, and on the technical side, also in troubleshooting, advanced troubleshooting, yeah. because obviously if you're operating, you know, you know, on the open sea, you have a problem on your engine, you need to be troubleshooting. Yeah. So there is not a lot of knowledge in the industry around dual fuel engines. Is this a risk? Probably. Is that another reason why maybe there should be, not should be, there could be more <laughs> to, like autonomous vehicles? So oh, there's that's less another discussion. Human, yes, but you know, uh, when we're talking about autonomous uh, vehicles, at the end of the day, who takes the legal responsibility if something happens? Because if you're on board a vessel, you know, the captain is the highest um, authority you know, who is, who is there, who is guiding uh, the crew. Of course, the captain is not always to blame, obviously. But if you have an autonomous vessel, then it comes down to legal concerns. And there are so many other concerns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, fascinating. Well, no, thank you so much. Um, okay, so I guess, yeah, a couple more questions, if, yeah. if I may. Um, so what does a day in the life look for you? Are you, sort of, are you generally traveling around different teams? Or is it mainly online or what does your week look like? Yeah. Like? Well, you know, we are all based in different locations. Yeah. Um, basically, we have teams in India, Houston, uh, Denmark, um, Brazil, Dubai. Like, we are located all over the world. I'm located in Greece. Yep. You probably have guessed by my accent. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so mainly it's a lot of teams meeting, you know, trying to uh, manage different teams. And of course, um, there's a lot of reviewing of courses and reviewing of training material. And um, this, ta this takes a lot of time. Yeah. But there's also a lot of discussions uh, with um, industry, other industry players, like companies we are working with, uh, vendors, uh, possible vendors, um, other companies that there might have been some synergies okay. and we can deliver together training. For example, um, recently we did a partnership with Green Marine and green fuels. Okay. This was like a great breakthrough for us. Um, and we're going, we're delivering actually uh, trainings on, on that side on, on green fuels with a focus on methanol. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of teams meetings. Uh, I tell that to my team, so, you know, and sometimes you don't have like the time between teams meeting to yeah. grab a coffee. <laughs> no, I know. So. You've hardly touched that. So I'm yeah. sorry, I'm keeping you talking. But, um, <laughs> okay, good. So uh, yeah, I mean, Thank you so much for, for that kind of overview. And, and I guess outside of work, and what, what do you like to do kind of in your spare time? Do um, you get any? Oh, yeah. My, my spare time is a bit scarce, Yeah, honestly, because uh, usually when I'm off work, I'm, I'm teaching at the university of um, preparing courses for Lloyd's Maritime Academy. Yeah. Um, and also do a lot of volunteering for various organizations, like um, my niece is empowering women in okay. the maritime sector and also youth uh, in the maritime sector. We're working with Project Connect, but also with Women on Top here in Greece mm. and 100 Mentors. This is like an NGO where we speak um, online to different uh, high schools around Greece about topics like, um, you know, what's like working in the shipping industry. So we kind of want to raise the awareness of what's like to be working in the shipping industry yeah. and you know I'm, I'm pretty much invested into you know volunteering and you know giving back because at the end of the day we're no man is an island we're not here by ourselves and it's important to be giving back and uh, I'm, I also like to spend a lot of time with you know my husband and friends and of course I think that it's very important to take care also of your body mm -hmm. I'm a Pilates girly Oh, cool. Yeah, and I do also um, aerial dancing and, you know, I'm, I'm that sort of person. <laughs> yeah, so it's, you know, it's a busy day, actually. Yeah, yeah it sounds very... <laughs> well, I don't do any aerial dancing, but like in my, <laughs> my hobby to just... At the moment, it's just literally family, work, gym, and I love Formula One. Oh, you love and, Formula One. Yeah, a lot other than that. I don't do that much. I'm music, I guess. Yeah, music. I play guitar and drums, but I used to play the guitar, but I, I left it. You know, I, I think yeah, I think I'm, I'm a disaster in music. <laughs> you, you don't want to hear me singing. <laughs> no, well, I can't sing to save my life. Um, 
Okay, Joanna, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is, is there anything else, any other comments you'd like to make or anything else you'd like to talk about? I think it's uh, great that, uh, you know, so many people came here from Posidonia. Yeah. And, you know, we had this chance to meet everybody. And especially, you know, we're here discussing about uh, crew training, digitalizing crew training, green uh, transition. So this, this is a Important aspects. It was also touched upon during Posidonia and, yeah. and the events of Posidonia. So, you know, I think it was a big event for us. And I think it will get bigger by 2026. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. Okay, so if anyone would like to reach out to you or, or, the, or the, the MERS training team, what's the best way to of do course, so? Of uh, course, you can reach us via email through our website and you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm active on LinkedIn, so of course you can find me. And I'd be happy to connect. Cool. All right, brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate your time, especially making the journey to come here. So thank you again. <gasps> it's a hit. There's a lot of heat here. Okay, it's very hot. <laughs> All right. Thank you thank everyone you. for tuning in, for listening, and um, yeah, speak again soon.